been made by deer without rollers. Yep, we're still talking about Assault on Arkham. Because Lord knows, in a world full of good writing, we have to learn from when we write crap. So, uh, in case you haven't watched last week's, there you go. Check it out. And in case you need a recap, the Suicide Squad go into Arkham Asylum, uh, slip past the guards in some very odd ways that uh, even the world's worst D&D party wouldn't attempt, and uh, we're left with their goal, which is to find the Riddler's cane. Yeah. Last time we talked about uh, weird sexual catchphrases and slipping past the guards with uh, corpse boobs and uh, that guy's face. And this week we're going to just keep on trucking. So let's see. Where does the plot go from there? Ugh. So the Suicide Squad make their way to the room from the end of Indiana Jones, you know, the Ark of the Covenant storage room. Uh, only in this room, they wrote the names of each of the individual convicts on the outside of the crates so that should anybody break in and want to find something of theirs, it's not even cataloged by number or uh, inmate number or cell block number, anything like that. No, God no. They just have Joker written on the outside. And so when they find it, they immediately start breaking into his stuff because Harley wants her giant mallet. Um, a quick note, because this is the best time to talk about it. Uh, her hammer contains a nuclear device. That's right. Harley's hammer contains a dirty bomb, which is one of the main focal points of the film. It was never scanned or inspected by any of Arkham's elite staff. Um, and even Batman has no idea that it's there, that hidden inside the head of this mallet is a bomb that, on this very night, as coincidence would have it, is going to blow up half of Gotham City. It's the bomb that Batman was asking Harley about earlier when he was Macho Man Randy Savage, um, trying to find the bomb. It's, it's in a hammer. It's in a hammer. So they find Riddler's staff. And sure enough, the pouch pocket that Waller had mentioned is there, but there's no flash drive. Oh my god, now what do we do? We don't have the, we don't have the flash drive that Waller wanted. No flash drive. And then Batman shows up. And Batman should be a terror to all of these people. He's kicked all of their butts before in one-on-one, -on -one, probably eight-on-one -on -one combat, because they always have goons with them. And he's always emerged on top because he's the Batman. And here they are, and he starts absolutely going to town and wrecking them all. But then there's a cloud of smoke, and Black Spider walks out with Batman's utility belt, and everyone is just like, oh my god, Black Spider, you killed the Batman. So good. You're the best, Black Spider. You're just the best. You're the best. You're obviously the best. The best. Nobody kicks the corpse. Nobody goes up and uh, takes uh, takes a, a selfie with Batman's uh, corpse. No one tries to unmask him to see who he was. Instead, they just they just take him at his word that Batman is dead somewhere in the room, and they go about their day. <laughs> I cannot imagine dumber writing for these six characters than what I just said that nobody in Arkham Asylum would relish the fact that the Batman has been killed. It doesn't make any sense. You want to talk about shit not making sense. Oh yeah? You forgot entirely how he knew how to go there in the first place. Uh... Okay, so let me rewind back. So, remember when Batman is doing, like, a who's who around Gotham, you know, picking up Zaz and being up random criminals trying to find out where the dirty bomb is or whatever, and he gets into the Batmobile and is like, Oh, God, I hate this life. And Alfred's like, Well, sir, it is only the weekend. And then, like, he's doing, like, Well, there's a level B, like, yellow alert going on in Arkham Asylum right, right. now. And then, and, and, then, and then Alfred is like, Oh, but I'm checking the security cameras, and all seems to be on the up and up, uh, sir, Master Bruce, Master yep, Batman. Yep, Master Batman Bruce, and then he looks at the footage and says, 
wait a minute, Joe Bob Joe was working security there. He's on the Thursday shift, and it's oh Friday, God, and right. he probably owes me five dollars anyway. Something's afoot in Arkham Asylum, and he floors it. I forgot about that. That Batman, by simply glancing at the footage while driving, says. I know who works each of these shifts, brother, and that's not the right guy. And just absolutely a activates the superpower mobile and just goes for it. I did forget that. I actually blocked that out. It was so dumb. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm so sorry. So, Waller contacts Killer Frost. And she's like, hey, you want more time taken off your sentence? There's a second job you can do for me. I need you to go kill Edward Nigma." And Killer Frost is like, do you want to build a snowman? Okay, sure, whatever. And she goes off to kill a Riddler. And she gets there, and she's like, riddle me this, sucker, and breaks all the bars and comes inside and grabs him by the throat and is going to freeze him. Uh, and he's like, I can disarm the bombs that are planted in your necks because that's how we control the Suicide Squad. And she's like, wait, you can what? And it's just instantly down with the fact that the Riddler can't be trying to betray them just to save his own skin, but obviously actually knows how to disarm the bombs planted in their heads. Um, they go through a real convoluted mess where they have to travel through some ancient ruins that are below the Arkham Asylum to be able to get to the medical wing which culminates in a giant fight on a platform that shouldn't be in any sort of respectable facility. There's not even any guardrails on that thing. We are talking Death Star level manufacturing for this place. And uh, it's just so stupid. But I actually don't have time to talk about how stupid that is. They get to the medical, way, medical bay and <laughs> the Riddler reveals that the way that we can <laughs> the way that we disarm the bombs is through an electrical shock of a thousand volts directly to the head. Now, <laughs> assuming that these bombs have some sort of charge that would detonate, I would assume that a thousand volts would actually set that charge off. But, you know, whatever. But even if it didn't, let, let's say that that worked. If you're Amanda Waller and you put the Riddler on Suicide Squad, and he disarms them using a thousand volts to his own head, wouldn't you then put in a fuse that when tripped automatically triggers the bomb? Wouldn't you update your bombs to not be tripped like that? And beyond that, so okay, it turns out there never was a flash drive. It turns out this entire mission was a ruse to get somebody in there to kill Edward Nigma. Wouldn't you fix your bombs and just have the Suicide Squad go in to kill Edward Nigma? as opposed to this entire convoluted tell them all that they need to find a flash drive then send one to kill Edward. It doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. And you could say it's because Waller's always got a plan and is a master manipulator. This is a stupid plan. It's objectively dumb and doesn't make any sense. And beyond all that, Argus is supposed to be some of the staff that maintains security at Arkham Asylum. She could have just ordered him executed invented some grounds, paid an inmate in Arkham to shank him in the yard. This is not complicated. This did not require the Suicide Squad. But they used the Suicide Squad because, again, Michael Bay method. We're trying to find cool reasons for them to go from one place to the next, not actually uh, thinking out our plot in any capacity at all. The electrical shock works for most people. It does not work for King Shark, and that is because his skin is too thick. It's sort of a one-off thing, and because that his head explodes. And despite the fact that they had been building a romance between uh, Killer Frost and King Shark, uh, no one cares that his head just explodes in the room because he's a big ugly monster man. Uh, but one person said it doesn't explode. Black Spider. Black Spider's bomb does not kill his head. I wonder why that is. It's because, if you haven't figured it out, Black Spider is Batman. Batman beat Black Spider and somehow in that cloud of smoke earlier put himself into Black Spider's costume. And so since then, as we've been seeing Batman wandering around Arkham Asylum, 
clutching his face and never showing, you know, what would be underneath the cowl, Batman, in his infinite intelligence, threw Black Spider into his outfit. Despite the fact that he's got a different facial hair and skin tone, just assumed that nobody would notice or that nobody would care, and Batman was right. He goes completely undiscovered. Walk around, covering his face the entire time. And so then, Batman's head explodes when uh, when Waller sets off the bombs, um, not realizing that they've already been disabled by the Riddler. Right. Right. So, the Joker ends up playing with Batman's decapitated head, and uh, I guess he must realize that it's not Bruce Wayne, and so he has a laugh about it instead of uh, treating it with any of the reverence I feel like the Joker actually would if he had seen his uh, arch nemesis' his head be blown off. But then Black Spider rips off his mask and reveals that he has another Batman cowl under the Black Spider mask. Meaning somehow in, in 10 seconds back in the Ark of the Covenant room, when Black Spider and Batman fought, Batman put himself into Black Spider's outfit, put Black Spider into Batman's outfit, and put a second cowl on his head underneath Black Spider's mask. All for the sole attempt of invading the Suicide Squad and seeing what they were up to, I guess. Which means that down in those ancient ruins, without the railings I was talking about, where they have the big gunfight and Deadshot shoots all of those guards, murdering them instantly, and Black Spider is running with them, that Batman is like, well, I guess I can't prevent the murders of these people that I know by name and know their work shifts of. I guess I won't stop them from being killed. <sighs> because they aren't thinking about character motivation. That's why it's so important that you actually consider what your heroes would think and do, especially when they're undercover. We're gonna move on, but this is some of the dumbest writing I've ever heard of in my entire life. So then the culmination. The Suicide Squad decides that they are going to just bust out and that they are going to get free and that they are gonna get free of Waller's control. And uh, after that, Joker releases all the bad guys in Arkham, and we start having the power show, where all of the Arkham inmates start bl busting out. And they, um, we see Poison Ivy, and we see, uh, Scarecrow, and we see some other people, don't we? Um, who? Bane. Oh, right! I forgot about that. You want to tell them about Bane? So, in the montage of everybody getting released out of jail, somebody had the bright idea of encapsulating Bane in his own prison, still hooked up to tubes, chock full of venom, so that way anybody who was on their coffee break and accidentally pressed the button <laughs> to juice Bane with the one thing that makes him Bane, it gets pressed so that way he becomes Bane and busts out all Bane style, only for the sole purpose of later on when Batman comes in and knocks him out in like less than a minute so that way they could recreate the whole boss fight that was the only boss fight in the first Arkham Asylum game yeah, where you just had to, you know, pilot the Mad Titan around so that way he could beat up the other guys and then yeah. to pull out and then kick him into the river. Because every single boss fight in the first Arkham Asylum game was that exact same thing. Guy is going to run at you, you dodge, hit him with a batarang, and then do your God of War cutscene events. And so they recreate that in this movie... Uh, because it was the only iconic thing that the first game did. But you're right. Like, they left Bane in costume with tubes hooked up to the back of his neck and shoulders with the venom ready to be pumped in. Who in Arkham decided that was a smart thing? Why would you keep a criminal like that? Especially a criminal that had one particular thing that made them cool, let's just leave it there so that way some intern can walk in and say, hey, you know what would be funny? Press the button. Oh my god. It, inexcusable. Absolutely inexcusable writing. Um, ugh, it just is. Thank you, Kirk. We don't really get resolution for any of the other members of the team, either. 
all of the Suicide Squad members have just one crap ending after the other. Uh, Killer Frost, she ends up crashing a car. That's the end of her story. She crashes a car during the fight. Uh, King Shark and Black Spider have their heads blown off, just like KG Beast at the beginning of the movie. Uh, <laughs> freaking Captain Boomerang gets shot in the arm and falls uh, falls uh, back into the proper of the prison, and they never touch on what happens to him after that. He's just he's just done. Uh, Harley Quinn and Joker team back up and hop onto the helicopter that Deadshot has uh, uh, stolen for himself. And they end up flying out into Arkham City proper and being chased by the Batplane. But uh, Harley's too stupid to pilot it, despite the fact that every male who takes control of the joysticks instantly knows what to do. And she ends up crashing them into a building, in which case Batman ends up fighting Harley Quinn. And she says a joke along the line of, Yeah, Joker might slap me around, but you're the only person who ever really hurts me. Sure, he smacks me around sometimes. But you're the one who's always hurting me. Now I'm gonna hurt you. Which, uh, that's not a good joke, DC. You shouldn't have allowed that. Uh, and then beyond that, we have a fight between Deadshot and Joker, who are basically just fighting over Harley Quinn. Joker even says, like, I'll teach you to lay a hand on my property or something like that. You, new guy. I don't like people touching my stuff. Which is really screwed up. And uh, Deadshot tries to murder him in the most, like, live free or die hard way possible. Standing on the nose of the helicopter as it starts to plummet down into the streets below. And then hopping off at the last minute like Vin Diesel or some crap. And of course Joker's body's never found, so he gets away. And... <laughs> So does Deadshot, because Lord knows the fact that Batman beat Harley Quinn, he didn't decide to go up and see <laughs> what happened to Deadshot. And so Deadshot gets away. He gets away. And then to culminate the rest of the film, Batman goes and has a talk with Waller in her office, and he's basically like, hey brother, you better not keep doing that Suicide Squad thing. And she's like, what are you going to do to stop me? And he's like, you better not, sister. And she's like, I'm going to keep doing it. He's like, oh, no. And then he just Batmans away. And she's like, friggin' Batman, get tell me how to live my life. And she turns around and Deadshot's sniper beam shows up on her body. And she's like, son of a... And then he takes out to Deadshot, who's sitting on a hill with his daughter, about to murder Waller in cold blood. And it's implied that he shoots and kills her. That's right. So the, the victory for the main character of this story is Deadshot with his daughter committing a murder in cold blood because Batman couldn't be bothered to solve that because he's the world's greatest detective. Oh my God, this movie. And that that's it. That's the movie. And then uh, credits. Because, because plot and reasons and thought. The jokes are stupid and cheesy from catchphrases and sexual innuendo and uh, making jokes that women uh, are domestic abuse happens frequently and that it's laughable and that women should be treated like property. These are the gags of this film. Uh, the action is uh, just trying to mimic what happened to the video game and is um, the best part of this film. Uh, the acting is acting is pretty decent I mean, given the direction that they probably had. With the exception of the, the joke's timing is pretty poor. Um, and all in all, I think this is certainly worse than anything I saw in Batman the Animated Series. Certainly worse. Certainly. Kirk, anything to add? Did you like the movie? No. Is, is there anything else? As we mentioned last week... The whole plot of the movie could have been five minutes. Yeah, it really could have been five minutes. Just one phone call. Just her calling ring, up. Ring, ring, ring. Hello, this is Arkham Asylum. How can I help you? Yes, this is Waller. Kill the Riddler. Do you want us to cover it up? Yeah. You want anything else? Like a sandwich? Yeah. Tuna fish, please. Watching your cholesterol. Yeah. Done. That movie's plot completely solved. 
Five minutes. We did not need the Suicide Squad. We didn't need the Batman. This movie could have been done and over with. And it, it, instead, we had to go this convoluted. I mean, hell, even if, even if she didn't want to call up the guards, right? She'd be like, you're part of the Suicide Squad. Your mission, go kill the freaking Riddler. And he's going to say that he can disarm bombs in the back of your neck? He can't, because we made him better. And they, they're too good to be stopped by his stupid methods now. So if we see you, you know, talking to the jo talking to the Riddler, we're just going to blow you up. So don't even try that. Just kill him. Get time off your sentence. We'll see you in two days. Done, right? Settle out, boys and girls. Done. And then the Riddler is dead. This entire movie could have been solved with seven people working together to kill the Riddler to get a reward. And instead, the movie happens. I guess what we're trying to say is, don't watch Assault on Arkham. It's not good. It has no real redeeming merit to it, and uh, I wish I had my 75 minutes of my life back. Well, that's okay, because next time, we're going to talk about uh, Gods and Monsters. Yeah. And that gonna, one's worthwhile. We're going to talk about some good DC animated stuff, too. Don't worry. We're not gonna, just going to focus on the bad stuff. But thank you for sticking with us for these two weeks. Um, share the video on Reddit. Uh, share it on Facebook. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Instagram. Share it on MySpace. Share it on uh, GeoCities. <laughs> share it on your Angel Fire page. Load up Netscape Navigator so that way you can share it next week when the new episode <laughs> comes out. And thank you for sticking with us. Talk about it in the comments. Hit the like the button, the subscribe button, hit the downvote button, then unhit that button, hit the upvote button. Actually, I think it's there, 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 then there. I think. Don't quote me on that. Okay. <laughs> Well, join us next time on Pen May Minor. See you next week. Pen made by Tia with our voice.